Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to cover something called data augmentation, and it's a very visual thing. So if you want the code, of course, the link to the co-op notebook is in the description down below, but we're just going to talk visually about what's going on here, because it's a visual thing. So if we go to our folder here, we will see this downloaded data set, which has the important one is seg train. This is our training set of information. So it has the labels, there are the outputs, which are either buildings, forest, glacier, mountain, sea, or street. And each of these has a bunch of different images in there. For training the machine learning model, it says, hey, this is what a building looks like, this is what a forest looks like, and we have so many different examples of each of those. Now, uh, machine learning models need a lot of data, and we're not actually limited to just what happens to be stored physically on the disk here. We can get a bunch of data completely for free by just doing uh, maybe, for example, a random left-right flip. So this is the exact same image. I just grabbed some random building that we had, and we're going to be looking at that the whole time. So here's this initial building from the disk. We do a random left-right flip, and this has all the features of a building. It's just we got it for free. It's a little bit more computationally expensive, but uh, we got a picture picture for free, which increases the size of our data set. It says, hey, this is also what a building looks like, but we didn't have to go in that irritating amount of work and get a drone to fly over and take this picture flipped around. Or we could do all this other stuff, like maybe flip the brightness around. Maybe that's a little bit too much, uh, maybe not. Uh, we could also do random hue, which you can see kind of changes this uh, to a different ready kind of color here. We could do a shear, which you might not see a huge difference, but it's a little bit blurry. We can do a random rotation. And so this didn't do too much. If I do another one, you can see that's a little bit more rotated like this to the side. Uh, we have a random shift. So this basically moved it uh, to the bottom right corner like this. And then we can do all of these in a row. So if we just run augment, which basically does the above, which different with different parameters, and you can just keep running this thing to get different images. This looks a little bit blurry, uh, and so you might want to adjust the shear for that. For example, this goes down to one, and then maybe this rotation goes down to like five or something like that. Uh, but then you're going to keep getting different images, and we can do this every single time when we're training a model, we can do a different random transformation, because what's happening here is it's not doing the same shear, it's not doing the same random hue, it's not doing the same random brightness, and even this left-right flip, it's only a percent chance of it actually flipping it. So if you keep running this over and over again, you are going to get basically an infinite number uh, of different of different pictures from this. And of course, uh, the 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 power from that starts to weigh off with just one picture. But if you do this for all of the different pictures that you have, you can really, really increase the size of your data set. So just to show you quickly uh, how you would do this in something like TensorFlow Kira's, is above we have defined all uh, this augment function, which basically just takes a, a picture as a tensor, uh, and we do a bunch of things in a row. We do a random left right flip, a random brightness, a random hue, and uh, and for these ones that actually are imported from TensorFlow Kira's preprocessing, you'll notice this one is preprocessing, uh, but these other ones are, are just from TensorFlow image. For other preprocessing ones, we actually have to specify explicitly uh, this row axis, call axis, channel axis thing. But the point is that we do all of these in a row, uh, and then I'm actually clipping it to make sure that our values are where we, we expect them to be in 0 to 55. Then in the preprocessor, uh, the image data generator thing, where we do preprocessing function, which normally just does something uh, like scales the values, like it takes them all and it divides them by 255. What we can do instead is pass it this preprocess input function. And, and so what that does is it's going to augment, it's going to run this random thing and generate a new image from this. And then we can call whatever scaling function that we normally use for, for mobile net, for example. Since, I, since this model happens to be using mobile net, we're doing that. Uh, and you'll notice that in the val data generator, then this actually, we are not using uh, this augment thing. We're not using preprocess input, which also augments. We're just doing uh, the preprocess mobile net because we probably don't want to do that with the val, uh, the val data. You maybe want to, uh, but usually you just get a validation set and you see how well your data performs on that. And you can do whatever you want to the training set to try and uh, make it get more predictive power. So we make some base convolution or neural network, we make a model, uh, pick some learning rate, get the categorical cross entropy, and uh, we run a machine learning model. What you will notice if we were to run it is that it does take a lot longer to run. The pre-processing, um, you know, doing all that augmentation stuff is pretty computationally expensive. Uh, there is a way with TensorFlow datasets to make it less expensive. 
uh, but it's it's still pretty heavy duty. Uh, but you most likely, if you at least tune the parameters uh, in these this augment function, if you tune them properly, and you can just do that by looking visually what's going on, then you probably will get a much better machine learning model, and one that in particular is a lot more robust to the real world. Like if we had a machine learning model uh, that was being run on this drone, be taking pictures, it, it would be a lot more robust and better at take, uh, understanding various pictures from all this augmentation. So hopefully that was uh, an interesting idea uh, to inc artificially increase the size of your data set. Uh, it, show, it showed a little bit about how you might want to do that in TensorFlow. Obviously, if you want to look uh, fully about how to do that, I would just read this, uh, check out the Colab notebook and go through it yourself step by step. But it's a super cool visual thing uh, that uh, you know, I think a lot of people um, get confused by easily because people write some weird tutorials uh, on data augmentation and don't explain why you're doing it. Um, so hopefully this was helpful and uh, yeah, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you, if you haven't done it already. And thanks so much. I'll see you next time.